Good day. So one of the most common requests that I've gotten is a video or two on how to play Total War on the harder difficulties. So I decided to go with Marathi for this. Um, it's not quite as easy a start as uh, Malekith or Tyrion, but maybe not as stupid as uh, Queek. And it's one of the more interesting campaigns since you have the, uh, from the shadows. chaos corruption to deal with a and spread. Is a vile corruption is spreading. And Dark Elves are, um, they're fun, I think. Pretty fun faction, although their economy can get a little bit crazy once you understand how the slave mechanic works. So, I'll assume you have a passing familiarity with Total War. You've probably done the tutorial and played a few games. So I'm not gonna, I'll try not to talk down to anyone. Um, so first off, I think it's important when you're starting a campaign to kind of understand your longer term objectives. So as Marathi, you start out in the Iron Peaks. Um, directly south of you is going to be a major Lizardman faction. And then you've got basically a bunch of ruins, nothing going on to your west and north, for the moment anyway. Uh, to your east are a number of Dark Elf factions, who can be neutral to friendly to unfriendly depending on their uh, rolled traits Nagaroth warrior like uh, underdog for example they're not looking to fight you Lord of fear uh, rightly suspicious factions are gonna have more of an aversion to you so you're gonna lose some diplomatic relations there so first up there's two ways you can kind of go with this I feel that are both are valid. Um, at the moment, the only way to get trade is Marathi, and this might be fixed in a later build. Not that it matters for what I have in mind. But the only way to get trade as Marathi is to take over the Grey Guardians and Sildra Tor. Now that gives you a fair amount of income if you can find trade partners, which isn't always that easy <laughs> as uh, Dark Elves. But, that said, what I feel is a better idea just as a long-term goal for your campaign as Marathi, is basically just to usurp Malekith's start position, which is highly favorable. So first up, something you should know is uh, Vol's Anvil is a great settlement to grab, if you can possibly grab it. So there's a special building at Vol's Anvil, in addition to giving you ritual currency, um, that gives you minus 10% upkeep on all forces, which is really huge, because on the higher difficulties here, in um, Total War, Warhammer 2 specifically, the supply lines uh, expense. So when you have more than one army, each army increases your upkeep of all units by 15% on uh, harder difficulties. So upkeep's going to be a huge matter in this campaign, um, in any very hard or legendary campaign. Another thing I might mention while I'm at it about the ritual, the ritual, if you don't want to care about it you don't really have to um if the other factions finish their rituals first you can fight a quest battle that isn't too bad and deny them it so it's not the end of the world if you end up a little bit behind on uh, your ritual currency or if you don't do your rituals right away it can be advantageous to do your rituals because it does give you a significant diplomatic boost with your own faction so that's kind of nice if you're looking to get the dark elves on your side but in my plan we're going to have to kill a qu quite a few Dark Elves before we uh, actually get to making them friendly, which will happen. But um, that said, so like objective promises you probably want to think about grabbing. First up, Vol's Anvil, as I mentioned, for the upkeep. Uh, the province immediately north of the Obsidian Peaks is tempting because it's all ruins and you can just run in and settle it. But it is also unpleasant, so it's going to cost you more for less gain to go that way. And it might not be your best bet. Immediately north though, um, after you get through Shadowwood, is Haggrave, which has an incredible mine in its capital, which will give you a huge amount of gold and a lot of help with your uh, recruitment for cold ones. In addition, right north of that, of course, is Nagarond and the Altar of Ultimate Darkness. Both of these provinces, once you can grab them, um, will give you buildings with a 5% increase to your tax rate in all provinces. So they're pretty nice to have. Well, of course, that does mean more with Malekith, but, you know. No love lost between family members here. Also, um, 
not as immediate an objective, but if you can grab the Broken Lands, which you'll probably end up doing anyway, because you're going to see high elf attacks from the east most likely. Uh, in the campaign I did earlier, here is Marathi. Tyrion rapidly confederated the entirety of Ulthuan and then started pushing west. So you'll probably see quite a bit of conflict on your eastern borders. If you can grab, um, what's it called? Karand Kar. There's also a building here that gives you a significant bonus to your slave income and reduces slave penalties. And as you'll see, slave income is a big deal for Dark Elves. Um, so for example, when you look at the Sanctum of Quintex here, this gives you a huge amount of income. So a thousand plus another hundred percent from all buildings, this building actually gives you two thousand. So you can build up a huge amount of um, monetary buildings, money buildings here in uh, the Iron Peaks. And then if you then go into your slaves and go, hey, I want all my slaves here. And then as you get more provinces, you'll shut off the slave flow to everything except Iron Peaks. And you'll funnel them all into here until you max out your slaves in um, Iron Peaks. And then what that'll do, the bonuses can get pretty intense pretty quickly. Once your slaves are maxed and your city's built out, you can get easy plus 300% income. So this province alone can start pumping out 20,000 gold per turn, which is a little bit nuts, actually. So that's kind of the main goal with slaves, is to funnel them into provinces and then build buildings to support that, like the slave markets and so on. Anyway, so early in the campaign, I think the most important thing right away is you need to get rid of this army, even though it out auto calcs you. So this first battle, you're going to need to win. That's pretty much all there is to it. So the first thing you'll want to do, you do get a Canine Assassin, which you'll probably want to attach to your army right here. You could go for Assault Units too, that's 50-50 though. Um, so it has a decent chance of not working out for you. If you just put him into the army, uh, he can start getting some experience just from fighting and also help you win the battle. I am Marathi. I am Marathi herself, Empress. as a legendary lord, starts out quite weak. So she's got very little armor, very little in the way of resistances, uh, a little bit to magic, but very little to physical. So if she gets into close combat, she's quite vulnerable with her low hit points. Um, and her low damage and melee output, it's okay, but not like show-stopping right now. So she's more of a caster at this point. As you get into her uh, talent trees, you'll find, or well, skill tree I should say, this isn't World of Warcraft, but uh, the... Um, she becomes quite a decent hybrid lord. She'll get a decent amount of resistances. You can grab her 1001 Dark Blessings, so she's looking at 30% physical resist. Uh, Enchanting Beauty and her Heart Render in the Dark Sword will give all the opponents near her minus 18 melee attack. So she can actually become quite durable, especially if you go into spec into Survivalist. And um, so she becomes a decent caster as well, because she has talents like Blessed by Evil that uh, reduce the cost of all of her spells that you can pair with these. And she does get three traits, uh, three uh, spell lore traits like Life Leeching and uh, Spiteful Conjuration. So she can become quite a powerful caster as well. She works well as a hybrid lord because with Heart Render you'll notice a significant increase to her charge bonus. She already has a decent charge bonus on foot. It becomes 85 with her Dark Pegasus and you can grab Impaling Attack for even more charge bonus. So basically, she's extremely killy on the charge. Um, you can get her damage up quite high, and she has a significant bonus versus large. So she can rapidly destroy things on mounts with her armor piercing. And also, put in a huge amount of, uh, with Akarti's Blessing, Power Drain, Blessed by Evil, she can put out a lot of spells as well. So she's quite a versatile lord, but at the moment you'll find she's quite weak. So you're going to have to work around that. Mother of the Druki. Mother of the Druki. In any event. So as I mentioned, it's important to win this first Zenon. battle. Because on very hard, your opponents, so let's say Mazdamundi, Tyrion, you're kind of the threatening opponents here, they're going to be working quick. Same with Malekith. They're going to be rapidly expanding and uh, creating huge empires that can create a lot of stacks of armies to fight you. So it's not really going to go that well for you if you're sitting here turtling for a bit with only one t town. You need to get your empire carved out fast so that you can start um, 
building your armies up rapidly enough to compete with that. Otherwise, you'll probably end up forced back. Mother of the that said, this battle, you really need to win. So I'm going to go in the and show Sundra. you this. For the Druki. So looking here at this battle, it's a choke point battle. So you're the attacker. The AI, for the most part, in these defensive choke point battles is going to hang out here at its choke points and not come out to challenge you overly. At the moment, you can see the majority of their armies deployed over here on your right. So first up, uh, organizing your armies, what I would suggest is just for ease. Although if you, if you want to pause the battles too, it certainly makes it much easier not to do this. But just as a, a learning, maybe if you're going into Legendary doing multiplayer at all, one thing that I find very helpful, um, if you press the G button, you can put units into groups. So for example, um, if I select my Dread Spears, then control click the others, grab them both. Uh, press G, now they're locked into a group. And uh, with their group lock on, they'll stay in this formation even if you move them around. Or if you order them around. You can also press Control G to unlock the formation. And that's helpful if you're looking to move around. Um, one thing you can also do, like if you like, it's kind of easier if you're not feeling as confident about it and it's just more convenient for you. You can, if you put your whole army into one group like this, if you just want to march them around, if you put them all into one group, now they're all in one group C1 with the lock formation, then you can order, you can move them around freely and they'll stay in that formation. Even if you order them around. So that's kind of helpful, just as far as controlling your troops that I notice a lot of newer players don't do. Um, what you can do if you want a bit more control rather than putting them all into one group is, uh, so if you grab your Dread Spears, uh, you can put them in one group like this. And then if you want to control your crossbowmen, you put them in another group. And then let's say you want Marathi by herself, so you can grab her spells just by pressing 4 uh, on your uh, control group on your keyboard there. You can rapidly switch between controlling all your units. So let's say put the Assassin in group 5, Harpies in group 6, Hydra's group 1, and so on. So then you can rapidly switch between controlling all your units. Just a, a convenient way of controlling your armies, anyway, just to get that out of the way. There's also um, an ability that they added back in Warhammer from older Total War games called Guard Mode. And I really like this on missile units. If you put your uh, Dark Shards in Guard Mode, when you order them to attack something and then they run back out of range, they won't go chasing after them. They'll uh, just sit there and shoot something else. Which means your missile units won't end up chasing roading units if you, say, attempt order them to attack an enemy and then end up running into melee, which is super not helpful. Um, anyway, about this specific battle. So we have our Harpies with Vanguard deployment. What we want to do here is use our advantages to best advantage. So one, we have a Hydra. This thing will destroy the enemy infantry lines. The Dread Spears are a little bit more threatening. If you look at Dread Spears and their stat line here, it's not that impressive until you get... They have 14 bonus versus large. So what bonus versus large actually does um, is it applies to both their weapon strength and their melee attack when they're attacking large units like Hydras or Cavalry. You can actually see right here entity and unit size um, and see whether things are small or large. Now, with the Dread Spears, with their uh, significant bonus versus large, they will actually be able to damage the Hydra a fair bit even though it... Uh, conveniently regenerates, so it'll still be fairly tanky. Hydras are pretty obnoxious to kill with their another takes its place rule. Um, but you'll probably want to focus your spells and shooting on getting rid of uh, the more threatening things to your Hydra here. Because the bleak swords, the sword infantry, are just going to get completely wrecked by this Hydra. Which is convenient. There's also shades uh, you might have seen in the uh, enemy army list. Two shade units, so they're stealthy. Kind of like your assassin here. They have stock. So you have to kind of be aware of that as well. Um, so first up. When we start this out here. And like you might have seen in the tutorial for the game. Altitude's always an advantage. So if you can fight them downhill. Even this slight slope. It does give you a slight advantage to accuracy and melee attack. 
All right, let's start this up. So we do need to be aware of the enemy's artillery range as well, although this rock kind of might obstruct them because there's a physics engine in place here. So let's move these guys up. Move up our uh, crossbows. Um, when you right-click by default, your units are going to run. That does tire them out a little bit. What you can also do if you control click, instead of just right clicking, um, they'll walk. So that's nice for stalking units because they're less likely to be detected while moving slowly. All right. So basically, what we want to do in this battle is get the best matchups we can. Pretty much like any battle. Get the best matchups you can, get around the enemy's flanks, since whenever you're attacking a unit on the flank, it'll only get 60% of its melee defense. Or it won't be able to block with its shield. And if you do in the rear, they only get 25, 20% of their melee defense. Anyway, it's very advantageous. So that's kind of the name of the game in all situations. We want to get our Hydra in fighting their uh, melee infantry that aren't spears. We want to get their spears shot down. Uh, same with their shades. We want to tie up their... Uh, ranged attackers like uh, dark shards with stuff like harpies that can close quickly and cut them apart and then also their general if you can kill their general it's often very helpful in these early battles since it's a significant leadership hit so the assassin's good for that with his extremely ridiculous missile damage and decent attack and melee damage too so we'll have him over here to help marathi out marathi herself uh, the spells she has right now are not amazing. Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma, though, will be nice. Um, it's more useful on larger units. So it doesn't do very much damage to single entities or small units like uh, this unit of uh, Bolt Thrower crew. But on stuff like Dread Spears, it'll do plenty of, plenty of damage. There's a, a math to it. Um, but in this case, what you really need to know is just that it's more effective against larger units. So, moving in here, we can move our harpies into position to go around the flank, and that'll also force them to respond. We can start moving up here and see if we can lure them into a charge. Marathi here can move up, and see what happens, and see how they react. The Dark Shards, again, are the kind of the thing we want to get our Harpies in here. They've spread their army out a bit. I will make a banner from their treacherous flesh. So it may be possible as well. Uh, a nice thing about um, their being spread out is that you can focus on one part of their army first. Alright, so Marathi moves up. Remember, we want to make sure our Hydra has the biggest, the most uh, favorable engagements. So we can use Melkoths repeatedly to start wearing down their spear units here. We don't have overcasting yet. So there's the shades. Alright. Hanging out right here. It does look like the bolt throwers are obstructed by this rock. They've deployed themselves here. Which is unfortunate for them. <laughs> kind of funny though. Alright, so yeah, you see Melkost has a decent amount here. We can actually wear this unit down a fair amount. And if they're not going to move, that'll certainly help us out. Because we want to win this as convincingly as possible, right? So that we can start immediately taking their towns. And if they're not going to react, so much the better, right? Alright. There they go. Now they're shooting us. So we're going to want to be careful here. Try not to get Marathi shot too much because she doesn't have too much armor. Alright. So ideally we're going to avoid getting shot too much here. Now, they might actually come charge us now, because they're annoyed by the spell casting. Which does mean that we get some fun. Alright. 
so we can keep trying to wear them down here. The Black Art Corsairs are a little bit annoying for the normal units we have here, but not too deadly for our Hydra. Our Hydra also has the Breath Weapon it can start using here. And if they're going to start moving like this, that means our uh, Harpies have the opportunity to move in and do something dangerous. So let's use the Breath Weapon our Hydra has here. Now we'll get a number of kills right away. 30 kills, not bad, hey? Eh? That unit's almost wrecked. And if we start running out of magic, you can also use Power of Darkness, which is, don't have to use just a Marathi, you can use it on any of your units, which is pretty cool. Alright. Alright. So we can start shooting here. Alright, let's get our Hydra in here. Move our Assassin up, who we want to use to kill their uh, general here. Get that going. Get our Hydra in combat. Let's move our Assassin up here. And then our Harpies here are having a good day killing their artillery, and we can also send them after the Dark Shards. So their Dark Shards are broken now. We want to get rid of these Shades in a hurry too, because they're nasty dangerous. We can send our Marathi here in to deal with that as well. If we can get rid of the Shades, they do a lot of damage, but Shades are pretty vulnerable once they actually get into combat. And there go the Harpies getting rid of their other Dark Shards, which is nice. So the Shades can't fire while moving, so if you send Marathi over them, the AI is actually going to skirmish them away. Which makes it not overly dangerous for us. And then their Dreadlord's fighting our Assassin, and he's winning, so that's awesome. Alright, and then our Dread Spears are fighting here. If we can pull the Hydra out of combat here for a moment, we can actually use its Breath, which is nice. And then Marathi can keep using Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma to wear down the shades, and then the Hydra can actually breathe into the rear here, which will get us a ton of kills, 111 now, and then we can charge him into the rear, that's awesome. This battle's going interestingly. Murderous Prowess is actually about to proc, which is a Dark Elf ability, which uh, is significant. Once enough casualties have been inflicted on both sides, you'll get extra damage and vigor. Let's move the Hydra over here to cover Marathi. Uh, our Assassin's dying. That's unfortunate, but whatever, right? Let's see here. Oh, here comes the rest of their army. Let's back off here. Looks like their infantry ran, so we can send our spears out there. She's in a bit of difficulty, so let's move her away. Then get rid of these bleak swords. Here comes their Black Rock Corsairs back. Hydra should win that combat fairly handily. We've also got our uh, Harpies back, and they can go after these uh, Shades here, I think. Yes. And we've also got our Crossbows, so we can take up the Bleak Swords, hopefully. It's all just a matter of favorable matchups if we can. Now, their general's almost dead, actually, so why don't we shoot her? Our assassin's back as well. Hydras are going after the shades, so they won't be able to do anything. That's good. That's going to be maybe a difficult combat for the Hydra, but maybe we can break it out with Marathi here. Alright. Hopefully, anyway. And while the Hydra's running, it does still regenerate, so that's kind of nice. Their general is almost dead. That's good. Good. The Hydra will likely come back in a moment here. There goes the Shades are taking a lot of damage. Good. Alright, Hydra's back. Let's use your Breath Weapon again. Hydra's got tons of kills now. <laughs> Alright. Their general's nearly dead here. 
unit here that's being obnoxious we can probably get rid of with Marathi's spell let's get our close our uh, crossbows out of close combat here and the Hydra also causes terror and the way that mechanic specifically works is that when the enemy gets to nine leadership or lower they'll break instead of when they have they don't actually have to hit minus one which is nice That seems to be going well. The harpies are dead, but whatever. Let's move. Maybe we can have our dark shards shoot the shades. And the hydra is basically going to carry this battle for us. All right, you can shoot them. Just keep on hitting them with the miasma, and they'll start falling. Here come the shades. As I said, they do a lot of damage, as you can see, but they're quite vulnerable. Hydra can keep pursuing those shades, hopefully knock them off the field. Looks like our assassin routed, but he didn't actually die, so we'll keep him. That's kind of nice. Looks like they're charging, actually. That's okay, because the dark shards have got wrecked, true. But we can also move Marathi in and cast uh, Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma on them, which should rout them. Shades have decent close combat, mainly attack and defense, but their armor and HP leaves something to be desired. Alright. What's actually still on the field for them? These Dread Spears, okay. But we still got a near full health Hydra, but we want to get these Shades off the field. That would be ideal. There, they're broken. Perfect. And then we have our Dark Shards here. We we'll need to deal with uh, these units when we have a chance. But that'll be okay. So the Hydras chase them off the field. Perfect. And then... If we regroup over here, get our forces together, we should be in good shape. Marathi can actually just keep those shades routing. That'll be ideal. Black Art Corsair shouldn't last long, though. They're terrified already. And now the enemy is suffering army losses. So once one force gets enough of an advantage, uh, army losses kicks in and forces them to keep routing. Perfect. So we don't actually end up needing Power of Darkness in this battle, just because Melkoth costs very little. I guess I'll wipe this shade unit out. Good. Alright. It's often a good idea after the fight, too, if you want to just uh, run up and destroy the routers just so you don't have to fight them later. Alright, just like so. Hydra with 216 kills is pretty nuts. And also it gives our Hydra a chance to uh, regenerate some more. Just for later battles, that'll be useful. Okay, let's use our last bit of mana just to try to kill these jerks. Because I just don't like them that much. <laughs> In truth. Okay. Perfect. Is she just rolling around? That's an interesting animation. <laughs> I don't think I've ever zoomed in on her close combat animations on foot before. Oh well, maybe I won't see it. Doesn't matter, that's a good enough of a... Uh, so it is a Pyrrhic victory, but at the same time it's going to put us in a good position to start taking their settlements over immediately. Um, so as soon as this is over, what we'll want to do is uh, pursue them and make sure this army gets wiped out. I am victorious. Enslave, I, I think, need of is usually your best option here. It's going to start getting your economy going. Let them go. I cannot. Ransom is a temporary, like it's a one-time goal, Take these but these slaves, away. not only do you get replenishment on your army, but you're going to see um, I have need of slaves. over time a significant economic gain from it. So we'll enslave these jerks. They're going to run, because whatever. The first That's fine with me. And then we're going to pursue them here. 
Guide us, Kane. So basically fighting the same fight as before, just a bit more favorable to our side, a bit smaller smaller scale. We'll just speed this up here. And we'll keep our assassin back off so with his six hit points he doesn't get killed. <laughs> Move our crossbows up. We'll want to win this one pretty much with our uh, more powerful units, so we can move the Hydra up and just be a big jerk to them. And be like, sup. We will declare the supping. The breath, is it's pretty awesome. Especially in these early fights, but even later. And then we'll move our Hydras up. Well, not our Hydras, I keep calling them that, our Harpies. The enemy has mugged us! After which, they can go after any dark shards that are annoying us. Uh, which I think they have some of, don't they? I don't know, maybe not. I don't the see any. They might have a shade unit too, but that's fine. So we'll breathe on these jerks. Boom. Uh, yeah, something's shooting me. These shades. Okay. Unfortunately, the Hydra keeps regening here. Um, there's a regen cap, which I think is 70 or 80 percent of a unit's maximum health. But that's okay. The Hydra's definitely not going to get near that. Then we can move Marathian to be obnoxious to them. Keep using Melkoths to wear them down. Specifically the units that threaten our, um, our Hydra here. Like these Spearmen, for example. Okay, let's move our own crossbows up as well. That should probably, once you hit them with enough spells or artillery, the AI usually charges. That's my experience. Um, so our Hydra has breath up again, which means we can obnoxiously breathe on them again. Get some more kills. Yeah, here they come. So we'll do that. That'll wipe them out. We'll charge the Hydra in. And then we'll have Marathi cast her spells on the Shades and send the Harpies out for the Shades. We don't like the Shades much, if you're wondering. And then we'll try to move her out so she doesn't get shot to death. Let's move our crossbows up to deal with the um, Shades as well. That should cause them to run. The AI usually likes their skirmish mode. Oh, not in this case, apparently. Interesting. That's fine. Alright. Harpies probably won't win this fight, but that's okay. We'll back them off and then just shoot the Shades to death with our crossbows. And then maybe a few more seconds. And we'll get uh, Melkoth's Mystifying Masma on this spear unit that's threatening our crossbows. And then charge Marathi and that should get rid of them. Get these guys on guard mode. Keep shooting the Shades if possible. Oftentimes in guard mode, Range units can keep shooting even though they're in close combat, as long as they're in guard mode, so that's kind of nice. And then hopefully we can get rid of these Dread Spears that are annoyingly charging our ranged unit. So we'll keep the Harpies out for now so they can later on replenish. The Hydra should be able to take care of all this infantry fairly handily by itself. Charge them in the rear with Marathi. Remember, rear charges have a significant uh, leadership hit. Although our Stark shards have annoyingly failed. That's okay. We'll shoot them with these ones instead. Oh, there they go. Now they're broken. Hydra's just having a good time murdering things. It doesn't care. Alright, looks like our crossbows are back. That's good. And then we can uh, use some more Melkoth, charge some more things in the rear, and bring our crossbows in to shoot them as well. Did you do that sliding attack again? That's kind of cool. Once you defeat an army twice, uh, like if it you defeat them, they retreat, and you catch them, they'll be wiped out for good. So this army, we don't actually have to pursue them. We're basically just stalling for Hydra regen at this point. Um, but yeah, even if you ended it right here, they'll all 
disappear. We didn't even get a murderous prowess proc, go figure. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Any event. So. So with that, that'll give us the opportunity to uh, level Marathi up. So, there's a few things you can do here. Rope Marcher is always nice just for more speed and getting through your campaign. Uh, right now, it might not be a bad idea if we go and grab Melkos Mystifying Miasma. We're looking to get her magic capability up pretty quick here. Um, get some more useful spells, because that's kind of really where her strength lies. Early game, anyway. So once we can get Doom and Darkness and Soul Blight, that'll be useful for these early battles, um, especially with the low leadership in these early fights. Doom and Darkness can be pretty cool. Um, getting Life Leeching will get us a fair amount more wins to play with as well. And ultimately, Pit of Shades is going to be her main damage dealer for her magic. Um, that said, let's the level her up. And so she does. The uh, red line is usually the most useful for most lords. Um, I actually didn't end up going that way with Marathi. I find that if you go into her favorite assets skill here, it gives a huge bonus to Shades and Dark Riders. And then, so you can make an army that's basically almost entirely Shades and Dark Riders for her. They all vanguard deployment, so you can deploy very close to the enemy, and they're all very fast. So you can become a really quick strike deadly army that does a huge amount of damage and doesn't need to worry too much about taking hits back. And in that case, you can just grab Inspiring Presence and maybe two points in Raid Leader, just for Shades and Dark Riders, and not even worry about it, because then everything else is just going to be a waste going through. Like, you don't really need what's good is Rally, right? These things are nice. It's nice for the range, but uh, I think with Marathi, she has a lot of good options in other things. Um, so, for example, you'll want Lightning Strike. Or perhaps you want to go more into, like, her close combat traits are pretty sweet. You can grab Deadly Onslaught, 1001 Dark Blessing. She becomes a really nasty debuffer and charger. Shroud of Despair is a hugely useful thing. Check this out. Enemy leadership minus 10 local region. So that stacks with Fear and Terror and Doom and Darkness for a huge leadership bomb. So Marathi can, has a really easy time getting her opponents to run off the field. Um with uh, favorite assets she becomes pretty nasty so that's kind of what I was thinking as far as my build the way I built Marathi and that worked really well for me on very hard as far as making a really quick strike force that can easily wipe an enemy stack um, in no time flat in any event so uh, no research right away a vile corruption is I would suggest going you have a few options here. You've got raiding, post battle loot. You've got recruitment cost minus um, extra things. Leadership for dread spears, bleak swords. That's nice. Right away, though, uh, I would suggest grabbing founded on tyranny and then revel in suffering. That takes you ten turns, but that gets your growth going fast. Now, growth is hugely important in the Production early game. The you want to get out of having this very limited number of building slots and limited number of buildings. You want to get your level 3 and level 4 cities in a hurry um, for monetary reasons and unit reasons. So I think in this case, the faster your growth is, the faster you can start getting that. Money probably won't be a problem if you're being aggressive because you're going to get a lot of post-battle loot and uh, sacking, loot and occupying and so on. In any event, that's pretty much all we can do for now. So I'm going to end the turn and move on. So interestingly, um, in this case, the AI is just blatantly cheating and doesn't die when I pursue them here. I'm not really sure why that happens sometimes. It doesn't matter, they're actually going to send their force to attack me with the, the tiny amount of stuff remaining to them. So uh, this is obviously an easy win, so I'm not going to waste your time with this. But that'll wipe out their army and leave us free to move on to their city. Although it does conveniently uh, level us up, give us some enchanted gear, and let us replenish our... Uh, Hydra a bit more. So that's kind of nice of them. <laughs> Which, in any event, also lets us uh, level up Marathi and grab Soul Blight. So that'll help out our Hydra in close combat here. And it lets our uh, adequate. assassin. Yes, adequate. Our adequate assassin. I like the Marathi comments on all your agents. That's kind of nice. So we'll grab Dance of Death with him, getting him back into a, um, a close combat role. Eventually, once you grab something like. Um, where is it? Dark Venom and uh, 
assassin's trophy, he can become quite adept at sniping lords out. I am Maraki. You're All right. Two. So then this jerk exists, so we can blow him up and grab some more regen for our Hydra. But that'll also nab Marathi and Ogre Blade. Oh, that's going to be massively useful here. <laughs> and then uh, we can probably... Well, I don't think right now I want to grab... I might want to grab Doom and Darkness here. Just for the... Um, so we'll have two spells available. Because we're running... At this point, a lot of our wins are... Uh, having a hard time spending it all. So Doom and Darkness will also let us route some of their units early. And then we'll have also Soul Blade as well. Although, generally it is nice to get the double levels for uh, your spells, just for uh, extra wins cost reduction. But right here, yeah. One thing I will note while I'm here, uh, Power of Darkness, I'm not massively inclined to pick this up, because points come at a premium here for Marathi, she's got a lot to spend. And all that uh, getting Power of Darkness here, you only have three uses, so that's going to save you a grand total of three wins over the course of any given battle, right? So that's not maybe the most useful one of you could ever get. Whereas like with Soul Blight or Doom and Darkness upgraded, you'll notice how it reduces the wins cost here. Um, you're going to be saving a lot more wins over the course of any battle, since you'll probably end up casting those spells more than two or three times, and even then you're saving you know six instead of three. And uh, life leeching is always useful as well, just as far as having enough mana to throw around. So uh, we'll go with that for now. Doom and Darkness. And then, what's his name this here? One is capable enough. Sabioth also leveled up. So we can start moving him in here. Weapon Strength. He has lots of attack already, so I think Weapon Strength's the best thing for him early on. Um, since we're going to be keeping him with our army for now, because we need to, as I say, move quick. Although in this specific case, since he's taking the so much damage, it's probably a better call if he gets wounded like this, just to send him in to assault the garrison. I watch from the shadows. Failure. Well, no surprise Speak. there. Doesn't affect us at all. Anyway, so now we're just going to have our Hydra go in and solo the garrison. <laughs> pretty much. In any event. Glory. Basically, the whole thing here has been to... All of this struggle to this point has been to try to take this settlement by turn two. We need to move as quickly as possible and get our first province at least set up and hopefully move on from there. So, we need to win this battle, too. So, like before, we're going to set our units into groups. Um, so, one Hydra, two Marathi, three Crossbows, uh, four Spearmen, and five Harpies. As I mentioned, this fight's pretty much going to come down to the Hydra, but fortunately, it's gained a bit of experience. You notice the little chevrons here. They increase melee attack, melee defense, and leadership uh, the more they go up. As your unit gains experience, they're killing things. Um, although I will say that in this game, they skewed it more towards melee defense. Because they're trying to slow the combat down a bit, which is a nice change. Um, so, you'll notice now that when we double-click Soul Blight, or double-click Melkos Mystifying Miasma, you can actually overcast it. And then click again to get rid of that. Um, and what that does is it's going to boost the effects in some way. In this case, for, it gets you extra cast range for an increase in cost for um, Miasma. And then with Soul Blight, it's an increase in the duration of the debuff. It's an AoE that reduces the uh, enemy's armor and weapon damage. So right now, there's also a chance of miscasting. You'll notice miscast chance 50% for overcasting. Since Marathi's so low health, we're not going to overcast here because it's probably going to kill her if she miscasts. And that certainly won't help us at all. <laughs> I noticed that they have deployed their Rissel units further back. So what we might be able to do here... Harpies are good um, in this case is if the AI uses the skirmish mode. Like, I don't use this. I don't typically use skirmish mode on, on missile infantry. The way they're so slow, it's often better um, for them just to stand their ground and get more shots off rather than using the skirmish that makes them run away automatically. Um, for fast infantry and fast cavalry, that's great. For slow missile stuff like this, I feel it's counterproductive. Um, you're better just to move something in to save them or just keep let them keep shooting. Um, but in this case, we may be able to use it against the uh, to our advantage against the AI 
since they may run from the 13 harpies rather than shooting us, which is the ideal in this case. So again, we want to get rid of threats to our uh, Hydra. The bleak swords aren't threatening at all. Um, the bonus versus large spears and the dark shards with their crossbows are. Although the Hydra does conveniently have 35% missile resistance, which is worth noting. In any event, let's go annoy these guys, shall we? I'll go in and use Miasma on the, uh, feel my vengeance. Or, anyway, on the Dread Spears. <laughs> and that range is 100 meters. The range of the crossbows is 125. She should be able to get him without dying, in theory. Yeah, no big deal. And they'll make sort of noises while they die. It's kind of shrug. And I'll show you something with the Hydra here in a sec once this combat gets going. Let's bring our crossbows. Bring our spearmen up as well. Her cooldown also has been reduced significantly on Melkoth's uh, due to the talent. Although once she gets blessed by evil and gets a second rank in Melkoth, so it can get pretty nuts how low the cooldown goes. Alright, so let's move up here. We need to get rid of these crossbows too. Alright, looks like they're going to charge me now. Yeah, when enemies are shooting you, especially with artillery, you can actually dodge some of the shots if you move around a bit. Which is kind of nice. Here come the bleak sword, so let's grab the hydra here. Breathe into that big mass of garbage, please. And then Marathi, if you can do that. Harpy, can you go get the dark shards? So we'll cast that. And then we'll charge the hydra straight on in. Now something that monsters are pretty good at with their huge mass is they can actually pull through troops like this and just stomp right through them and go after whatever they want, which is kind of hilarious. Alright, so let's have our crossbows shoot these guys. The harpies are actually going to manage to successfully chase these off, which is really funny. Alright. Spears want to do that, that works for me. Let's get Soul Blight in here. That'll reduce their ability to hurt our Hydra. And then we'll move our spears in to cover our crossbows. Well, we move in around the flank and keep shooting. Always useful. We'll move Marathi in the rear here as well. The Harpies are probably going to die to those um, Dark Shards, but that's okay. They did their job. Alright, these units are going to get wrecked. The Dread Spears should rout here in a hurry. And that means we can have them shoot here. What are you guys doing? You silly kids. Should have put you in guard mode earlier. <laughs> Alright, so they're toast. Perfect. Just keep pursuing them so they get knocked off the edge. Let's move the Hydras into, or the Harpies rather, in to annoy them. Shoot them in the back. The Hydra's having no problem with the Dread Spears, as you can see. We'll move Marathi back this way. Alright. And we can also throw out a Doom and Darkness here to get these guys out. So they get super routed. That also lets our Hydra use the breath weapon they can't use in close combat. So shoot these crossbows. Oh, no, they're back, are they? Okay. That's fine, we'll use Melkoths on them. So once you start running out of um, mana like this, or Winds of Magic, you can use the Power of Darkness spell on a friendly unit. So in this case, probably the Hydra is your best bet. It'll do a little bit of damage, but greatly increase your power recharge rate, which is nice to have. Alright. So it looks like this unit hopefully will be routing soon. Although at this point they're being rather annoying and not doing so. Hydra should wreck them in theory. Oh, we don't want to get shot. They outnumber us. So we're going to move our crossbows back because we're pretty significantly outnumbered by them. And then let's... We can use uh, Melkos on this unit hopefully to get rid of it. Objective here, obviously. We want to get our Hydra out of combat if possible. 
and then uh, I wish you guys would just shoot. Sometimes that happens when they can't get a clear shot because the Hydra's in the way. So we want to move these back. And then we have our own Spearmen as well. They're coming back. Oh, our Harpies aren't totally gone. It's funny. Can we get in there and annoy them, please? Okay. Alright. We can use Melkoths again. And we also have another Power of Darkness. That'll get our at least some mana here. These units are all terrified now. Perfect. So what that means is that our Hydra is free to use its breath, hopefully, to get rid of these Dark Shards. There we go. Harpies are done. That's fine. The Hydra can freely charge the crossbows now. Which should be pretty much the end of it here. You notice the uh, murderous prowess bars filled up at the top pretty much here as well. So we can move our crossbows in now. And move Marathi up as well. The battle's pretty well in hand at this point. The Hydra's got them under control. They're going to get terrified. Now they're wavering army losses because all their units are routing. And that's the game. Because um, units that are routing don't count towards having part of an arm, your army on the field, and once enough of your army is, uh, once you're outnumbered badly enough by your opponent, army losses kicks in and you auto lose the battle. So then we can have our Hydra. Ooh. It's busy sink killing this guy while I completely don't zoom in on the animation. That's kind of cool. Perfect. And our Hydra is now uh, gold experience, which is awesome. I should mention, if you fight long enough, you get exhausted like this. Now, exhaustion is a pretty significant debuff once your troops... They go from fresh to active to winded to tired to very tired to exhausted. Um, exhausted is a minus 30% debuff to pretty much all your stats. You lose 30% speed, 30% attack, 30% defense, 30% damage, 30% um, armor, which is significant as well. So it's pretty bad. Um, if units rest for a bit, they can get it back, but you definitely want, ideally, to have fresh troops engaging tired enemy troops if possible. Although, if you're both exhausted, it evens out, so no worries there, although it does become a bit of a slog. Alright, so let's end that. That's been very successful. Perfect. So that's going to put us in a position here, uh, after two turns, where... We're very well poised to quickly begin our breakout of our initial territory. Um, in this case, normally I would suggest looting and occupying. It gets you significant replenishment, gets you slaves. Uh, you can just pay to repair the buildings. Uh, when you're trying to take over territory, you want to take over. In this case, it might be better to do the occupy because we don't really want to have to stop right now to deal with a rebel army while we're trying to wipe out this uh, enemy force in a hurry. So I'm going to occupy this for now, although generally I would suggest looting and occupying for the slaves. The dog grows and that's going to give Marathi the <laughs> Lords over Druki trait, which is kind of fun, but helps us out here quite a bit right away. That finishes our mission from Felicion, uh, which gives us extra money and some scrolls of Akarti. She's going to give us a new quest to grab a province. That puts Mar Marathi up to level 5. Um, we can grab Life Leeching. Which so every time we cast a spell, we get increased mana regen. Which is pretty nice. Um, Corruption we can probably also uh, demolish our extra superfluous conscription halls in uh, Quintex to get more valuable capital buildings there. And then we can also start upgrading Iron Spike with our excess money. And then, uh, as for Marathi yes. herself, that means we can start recruiting. You'll note Dark Elves don't have global recruitment like some other races, so you need to be a little bit more careful as far as where you're recruiting. Uh, right now, we need a bit more meat in our army, so I'm going to get two Dread Spears and then another unit of Dark Shards, so we kind of even out our ranged and melee capabilities. And then uh, next turn, we can add Sabioth back to the army. The and then head east. And continue with, uh, hopefully, our lightning conquest of the Bleak Holds. Incidentally, I feel I pro should probably mention, the reason I went to Iron Spike rather than the Moonshide right away is just, as far as you look at what you want to do with your medium-term goals, 
we would head over to Iron Spike. We grab this. Um, we secure our flank here, and then we head over to Moonshard. That puts us in a position where Marathi's in position to quickly unify her first province, and then immediately head east to try to grab Ball's Anvil and hopefully, um, what's it called, the Bleakhold Fortress. So I think that's kind of the ideal way. You can probably get the battles a bit more efficient, but the ideal way to do the first two turns. That puts you in a position where you can start rapidly expanding, um, and you're going to need to on very hard and especially legendary, just because of how quickly the AI empires will grow, and you don't want them coming in declaring war on you while you're still, you know, turtling in the ancient city of Quintex trying to uh, build your perfect army before you move out. And that's kind of a trap you can fall into, um, being over passive, when uh, I think the key to doing well on the higher difficulties is uh, calculated aggression, but knowing when you can be aggressive and when you can uh, rapidly take territory. Anyway, I'm going to leave it off for there. I'll come back in part two and show you how this uh, campaign goes in the uh, later stages.